Welcome to another Wellness Wednesday Q&A here on the Paso Norte Health Foundation's Facebook page. Um, as always, before we get started, we want to encourage you to visit epcovid19.org. It's your COVID-19 information hub for the Paso Norte region. It was created by the Paso Norte Health Foundation to help the community uh, find valuable resources to help get through the current health crisis. There's links and other resources for parents, students, businesses, mental health needs and lots more that you can find there in both English and Spanish and many of those resources are free. So go ahead and log on to epcovid19.org um, as we still are, are going through this health crisis here, especially in the El Paso region. Um, and we wanna keep people informed as much as possible. Today for the Q&A, we're being joined here by um, the Paso Norte Health Foundation CEO, Tracy Yellen. Um, as well as the Vice President of Programs for the Health Foundation, Michael Kelly. And we'll be discussing uh, actually three topics today. Um, we're, it's uh, the Health Foundation's 25th anniversary this year. So we'll be talking about some of the accomplishments and some of the upcoming goals for the Health Foundation. Um, we'll also be talking about um, a new um, recovery effort for COVID-19 um, which has some funds that are becoming available and how you can um, get your organization um, involved in that. And we'll also be discussing the 2019 annual report, um, which was recently released by the Health Foundation. So um, I want to say hi to Michael Kelly and Tracy Ellen. How are you guys doing today? Great, thank you. Great, thanks, thank Dave. Good, thanks for coming on today with us here. Usually we have one or the other of you, so it's good to have both of you at the same time. <laughs> Um, we, we want to encourage everyone who's watching out there to submit your questions early in the event discussion on any of these three topics, um, and we'll get to those questions uh, uh, as uh, towards the end of the 15-minute live session. Um, so let's start off uh, talking about the 20th, 25th anniversary. That's uh, you know kind of a, a good topic. Um, Tracy, can you take us through a little bit of the history of the Health Foundation, how it was started, why it was started, and, and things of that nature? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Um, it, it's really great to be here. It's, you know, we wouldn't have guessed 25 years ago predicted right, that we in our 25th year that we would be in the middle of a pandemic having uh, sheltered in place for almost 90 days now. Um, and we, you know, we would have expected the opportunity to celebrate together in person. And, um, but we didn't want this anniversary to pass without a recognition of the 25 years of investments that the Health Foundation's made in promoting health and preventing disease in our region. The Health Foundation was established in 1995 when Tenant Corporation um, bought Providence Memorial Hospital. Providence Memorial Hospital was a nonprofit hospital. Uh, Providence Memorial still exists today under the banner of Tenant Corporation. And the proceeds from that sale, which were $130 million 25 years ago, um, created an endowment that the Health Foundation Board has invested over this time um, to support grant making and leadership in, uh, as I said, the health education and disease prevention. So the Health Foundation, uh, at the end of 2019, our annual report we'll, we'll talk about, ended 2019 with about $249 million in assets and had invested $198 million, a uh, little more, in grant making since inception. So it started with 130, you know, got to almost 250 and has uh, invested nearly $200 million in leadership and grant making around health, edu health edu um, healthy eating and active living, five priority areas, healthy eating and active living, tobacco and alcohol prevention, mental health and emotional well-being, healthy kids and health leadership. And and I mean, with all all those dollars um, going towards those those initiatives, I'm sure there's been a lot of amazing um, accomplishments that have been achieved over these 25 years. Uh, Michael, if you want to talk a little bit about some of those major accomplishments that the Health Foundation has had, um, and maybe Tracy, after that, you can chime in with a few more. Sure. Thank thank you. Um, you know, particularly well before I get started on, on some of uh, our, our past work and, and our, our partner. Um, you know, I just recalled, you know, 
uh, I think it was 2008, 2009, the Health Foundation also had a role in responding to the, uh, the swine flu at that time. It was a good partnership with the health department uh, in El Paso. Um, so, you know, some of our, our more recent work um, uh, around COVID-19, of course, is, is relevant as well there. But, but you know, years ago, we, we've had a lot of different initiatives and we've done every herbal safety, um, uh, to youth programs and, and more uh, uh, environmental stuff. But one of them I want to call out today is Begin at Birth. It was a large early childhood initiative uh, that had multiple angles to it. For example, we really focused on early childhood intervention. And what that means is um, children who, who, who are born and are developmentally delayed uh, or, or disabled kind of early in life, they can get detected and into services, um, the better their outcomes will be. So really promoting that. Uh, accreditation was another area. So helping um, uh, child care centers all across the region get NACI accreditation. And um, we had a very large uh, kind of effort with the YWCA uh, in helping their after school programs develop curricula and um, organize supplies course, helps many, many kids as they are a major provider of after school uh, type program. Uh, another kind of legacy program that's been around and we still have our, our kind of our toes in is the catch program, the coordinated approach to child health. And this is a, um, a, a very supportive program with materials, equipment and technical assistance for schools. Uh, so their PE programs are run the best they can be. And um, and that has, has some real minded about its effect on children's time uh, being active versus just like standing in line waiting to shoot a ball. Uh, and um, we also have, uh, Tracy mentioned our, our leadership uh, priority area. So I guess maybe 10 years ago by now, we started our Realize program. And that is a, um, a leadership experience where we every two to three years, we take 20 executive leaders and uh, run them through a really intense about 12 months of coaching, of offsites, of opportunity to share and learn from speakers and reading uh, to really hone them and, and, and take them back so that these, these already good leaders can excel and, and move to the next level uh, in the nonprofits. Because of, of course we have a small staff at the foundation. So if we're to achieve mission, we need strong partners like these nonprofits, so we invest in them. Right, and I know from my personal experience um, working with the foundation and talking um, with people involved in those all those initiatives, and especially um, the leadership initiative, it, um, it, it, you know, it's been it's paid dividends within our community that are much needed. Um, and Tracy, so what are some of the what are some of the um, highlights for you from the past 25 years that you've seen? I know you haven't been with the foundation for 25 years, but what, what are some of the highlights that you've seen uh, and accomplishments that you've seen? Yeah, you know, I'll mention a few important ones. Um, one is uh, investments in smoking policy and reduction. So uh, the Health Foundation over 20 years uh, or more has been involved in a smoke-free Paso del Norte. The city of El Paso is one of the first communities to adopt a, a clean air ordinance. And we've seen smoking rates in El Paso County decline from 24% to as low as 11%. Um, and now we've seen a correlating decrease in lung disease. So you work on the behavior, which is smoking and you improve health outcomes. And, and that's you know, really a, a, a good example of, of how the Health Foundation likes to approach um, health education and, and disease prevention. We are, we're now uh, have pivoted to vaping. Um, clearly, that's a, a growing problem in our community, especially among young people. And I think you'll see some additional work the Health Foundation is doing with multiple partners on that. Um, more recently, we completed three and a half miles of trails, uh, the Playa de Drain Trail from Escalade Park to Riverside High School, and a master plan to create a 68-mile Paso del Norte Trail um, from one end of El Paso County to the other and linking into Juarez uh, and invested in some trail development in Las Cruces as well. Clearly, trails are, a, a, you know, the built environment, making it easy for us to 
be active, to walk, have enjoyable, safe places to exercise and to increase act physical activity and decrease sedentary life. All of that we know helps contribute to the reduction of diabetes, obesity, heart disease. Again, you improve a behavior to reduce, reduce disease. Um, and, then, and then finally, I'll, I'll mention just two other quick things. Um, uh, we're you know, so proud of the Health Foundation's work over the last few years in mental health and behavioral health. We were part and are part of a, a large group of nonprofit, governmental, and uh, other organizations that are, are part of the El Paso Behavioral Health Consortium in El Paso, the Doniana Wellness Council in Las Cruces in southern New Mexico, and the Rotmenas, which is a, a collaborative in Juarez, really looking at improving access to mental health services. Finally, every once in a while, we will invest in, in a big idea and um, something that will be long lasting in our community. And in addition to the programs and efforts we've already talked about, um, the, our board in the last few years made a leadership commitment, $6 million commitment to the bring a new dental school to our community in, in cooperation and partnership with Texas Tech. And we look forward to welcoming the first class of dentists. Uh, our dental students this fall uh, as they as they begin to uh, come to El Paso to to study here. Okay, and I mean those are all some tremendous accomplishments for our community here in, over the last twenty five years. And now that we're here, I'm sure you guys are looking forward to the future. What are what are some of the short term and long term goals here in the next five, ten, or the next twenty five years that the Health Foundation has in front of them? Yeah, so our, our board um, works on strategic planning every three to five years so that we can look at, you know, what we'd like to accomplish. Um, promoting health and changes in disease and population health are take a long time and are, you know, have to be very purposeful. And so we look forward to investing in our, our key priority areas to pre prevent disease. Um, we expect, and, and we'll talk about next, um, can some continued work in COVID related recovery. Um, and so we expect to, you know, work in the recovery over continue working the recovery over the short term and then really look at preventing chronic disease. Uh, like I mentioned, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, um, continuing our investments in, in mental health, healthy kids and, and health leadership. Well, I just want to say, um, first of all, congratulations to the health foundation for making it to their 25th anniversary. Um, and we hope, we certainly hope that it'll be around for the foreseeable and long term, very long term future, because it's um, really had a lot of positive impact on the health of our community and, and, and other areas too, like we mentioned, like leadership and, and a lot of other things. So congratulations to the two of you and to the whole foundation, to the whole staff there. And we look forward to seeing um, all the great things that are coming for our community as well. Um, Moving on to our next topic, um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a, a new letter of intent available um, for COVID-19 recovery efforts for organizations that are looking for monies um, in order to help in those efforts. So, uh, and I know Michael, you know a lot about this topic. So tell us a little bit about what the purposes of the COVID-19 relief money that is that are available and how they can, and about the purpose of the uh, LOI. Yeah, so th thanks for the question. As in any uh, kind of call for letters or call for proposals, there's a lot to be known. So this this uh, call for letters of intent is to give a nonprofit organizations in the Paso del Norte service region, Southern New Mexico, uh, counties and, and Juarez, an opportunity to give us their ideas as to how they may help uh, themselves or the systems they work in recover from this pandemic, prepare for a future crisis, including a, another pandemic or surge, um, and perhaps transform their organization or system. So I, I, that's a lot there. Um, and and uh, we have a series of seminars planned. Uh, and if they um, the list our website and go to our grant center, they'll see that they can register. Uh, for some seminars where we'll take the, um, the sufficient time, I think each one's about two hours long, uh, to really walk through what do we mean by this recovery, preparedness, and transformation for the nonprofit sector. 
Um, it, it's very unlike kind of like government relief funds or paycheck protection or something like that. Uh, the, this, uh, this is supposed to be a little more strategic and, and helping the nonprofits uh, take some steps in, um, in the next few months or even uh, years. Okay. Um, I do want to make sure that I mentioned that if, if there's anyone out there watching now who's representing an organization who's thinking about submitting for um, this, uh, this COVID-19 relief um, grant money, that if you have any questions here in the Facebook Live, go ahead and drop them in the comments and we'll get those answered for you. And if, if you're watching this afterwards, after this is live, it'll still be on the Facebook page. If you still have questions, Go ahead and um, drop the comments there. Drop your question in the comments and we'll make sure that we get back to you and answer those questions for you. Um, and we'll drop a link here in the comments too so that you can see uh, the Health Foundation's webpage and where you can go for more information on this LOI and how to apply for those monies. Um, Michael, can you give us um, maybe some examples of where that money could be used? Sure, so when I think about recovery, I think about the next few months and training staff uh, for the digital world, because we're all going to be in that more. I think about changed funding streams. A lot of organizations are going to have problems holding galas. So how do you quickly adapt and recover there? I think about communication strategies around reopening. How do you really talk to clients and say, we're doing things differently, but we're, we're trying to be safe and, and, and the like. So there's some examples in recovery. In, in organizational preparedness, uh, organizations, it, Many of us were, were caught not fully prepared. So disaster preparedness and response plans uh, need to be in place for nonprofits. Uh, business continuity plans, including financial planning. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't think anybody really knows uh, what, what the economy is going to look like. Uh, but plan for the worst and hope for the best as well as staff and board training. What do we do next time so that everything's better? Uh, and then finally, I think there's some opportunity for organization and systems transformation, which I'm most excited about. And, um, you know, many, many nonprofits have legacy services that they've thought about ending, and this is a good time to responsibly close those up. Or they've been wanting to start a new service, and now the need is even more so really to think strategically about how to launch those. Uh, some organizations need to merge all together. Some just need to consolidate some back end um, leadership, staffing structures for the long term. Um, you know, so there's, there's lots of potential for total transformation of an organization, but also a system. When I think about how emergency food can be handled in our region, uh, I feel like, um, you know, how can the pantries and banks and everybody that's making donations um, kind of better work together in that system? And I think that could be extended for homeless shelters or a variety of other systems across our region. Great. I, I mean, just in doing these Q and A's, we've talked to so many of the partners of both the Health Foundation and the Community Foundation who have done a tremendous job um, dealing with the COVID nineteen situation. Uh, you know, some who were more prepared than others, but those that those that maybe were not as prepared really jumped in and in feet first and got got some of these things done. And I also recognize that. Um, some changes need to be implemented and some of those changes um, could be useful in the future. We talked to a lot of partners about how some of these changes have really pushed them to implement some stuff that they had been putting off for a while. And I think that this grant money will also go a long way towards achieving some of those goals for them. Um, so, and we already dropped the link here in the comments if anyone is interested in getting more information on that funding opportunity for nonprofits. Uh, again, if you have any questions, um, just go ahead and leave them there in the comments. If the, if this live session is over, we will still get back to you and answer those for you. Michael, just to finish off the this topic on the on those grant monies that are available, um, as we mentioned, you can apply there on the website. But when is the deadline? Yeah, so this is a pretty unique opportunity. We're going to have at least two grants. Uh, so the the um, letters of intent are going to be due July 10th for the first round and November 6th for the second round. But I do want to emphasize that if any organization 
uh, has a, a, a more immediate, not just need, but also strategy and plan to get that rolling, uh, let me know and uh, we can certainly make some modifications uh, because our nonprofit partners, are, like I said before, are really how we do our, our business through them. Great. So um, as I mentioned, we have a couple topics that we're going over today. We're going a little longer than our usual 15 minutes, but that's okay because these are all three very important topics that we're discussing. Um, moving on, we want to talk about the 2019 um, annual report for the Health Foundation, which was recently released. Um, you can find that on the Health Foundation's website as well. Um, so um, Tracy, maybe you want to talk to us a little bit about some of the highlights um, that we can find in that annual report for the Health Foundation's work in 2019. Sure, I'm happy to, and we can keep this really brief. We encourage everyone to log on to pdnhf.org and click on the annual report link. Um, you know, transparency, accountability, stewardship are values that are really important to us. And so we wanna make sure that we provide an accounting of all the funds spent in the previous year, um, how those funds were spent, and so how were they allocated by health foundation priority area, um, what kind of grants were made and who did they go to? We uh, invested $11.67 million last year in, um, in grants and charitable projects um, with 75 different organizations. And so you can find highlights of accomplishments um, from 2019 and uh, stories of partnerships with all kinds of organizations and the detailed listing of how the funds were allocated. Um, we, you know, we're, we're really proud that the Health Foundation uh, stepped up to support um, the, the victims and their families uh, from the shooting last year. Um, they covered all the administrative expenses for the El Paso Victims Relief Fund in the Paso del Norte Community Foundation, which is one of our two foundation partners, um, and um, provided additional support to the Fundación Paso del Norte, which is our partner foundation in Ciudad Juarez. So, in the annual report link, you'll also find a tab for the annual reports for the Paso del Norte Community Foundation and the Fundación Paso del Norte. And then you'll also find um, a list of all of our board and staff um, and then links to our 25 year history. So on the Health Foundation website, there is now a new timeline um, on, on the homepage of our history and also a link to a kind of a more detail about the investments that we've made in, in our 25 year history. Okay. And so, I mean, you already mentioned some of the very um, tangible impacts that the Health Foundation had on the community last year. But are there any others that you want to you want to maybe highlight for us? Sure. Um, uh, just you know, we're we're so proud of the work that our behavioral health consortium have have done um, uh, in across the region, um, and just wanted to point out in Alamogordo, they were able to establish a crisis intervention team, which is a partnership with Mental Health Authority and their police department. We've seen that happen in El Paso with emergence in the city of El Paso, and it's been such an important resource for our community. And so a really uh, great accomplishment um, across the region. Um, we have also invested significantly in programs related to nutrition and physical activity with partners ac across the region, uh, including border partners in Palomas and the work they're doing there. Um, and also in increase investments in um, programs for disconnected youth um, with Rodadora and Ciudad Juarez, with the Boys and Girls Clubs of Las Cruces. Um, so really um, great organizations doing really important work serving thousands and thousands of, of young people across our region to improve their health. And so um, obviously, all, all of this tremendous work couldn't be done without the help of partners from the community, um, including, uh, you know, business partners or private partners who who make donations uh, and also the nonprofits who receive the grant monies and put these programs into action. Um, so um, who are some of those partners who helped make 2019 um, or helped further the goals of the Health Foundation in 2019? We have a number of uh... Uh, coalitions and collaboratives um, from healthy school, uh, school health, um, the Alcohol Impact Network, a Smoke Free Paso del Norte coalition, the El Paso Behavioral Health Consortium, 
um, the boost network, the border out of school time uh, network, all of our realized leadership graduates. Um, so there isn't a priority or initiative that we're involved in that don't include uh, the engagement of community stakeholders at all levels, um, and then also grantees. So 75 grantees this last year, um, all implementing pro uh, the programs in each of those areas. Tremendous help that we've all been able to come together uh, in this community and, and make it a better place. Um, and I just see that every, every, I feel like every year we see El Paso grow and get better uh, as a community and the way we've come together through through two crises in less than a year has been tremendous. And I think that the Health Foundation has been a big part of that. So I um, want to say thanks yeah. to the Health Foundation, to the staff and to all their partners um, for helping the community. Um, before we wrap up, um, if anyone has any last questions that they want to put in the comments here, uh, I'll check them and get to them. I do want to mention that we've been bringing you these weekly Q&A sessions, both on the Community Foundation page on Tuesdays and on the Health Foundation page on Wednesdays, um, mainly as a response to the community's um, questions on a variety of topics regarding the COVID-19 health crisis. Uh, and we want to mention that that crisis is still ongoing, um, especially here in the El Paso community. Um, but this is our final weekly Q&A. Um, that we'll be holding for both foundations. We will be back here to answer more questions and, and provide more answers as needed in the future, but we will not be doing it on a weekly basis from this point. Uh, we've been doing it for probably uh, close to two months now, I think, and uh, we've gotten a lot of great response from the community. We've gotten a lot of great info out there to the community, and we've gotten a lot of comments about um, how helpful these Q&A sessions have been. So we want to thank all the partners who've joined us on these Q and A's and all the staff members of the Health Foundation who have also helped put this together um, while, we're, while we've been going through this. Uh, I don't really see any questions right now on the comments. So I guess this is a good time that we can wrap everything up. Um, Michael, is there any last thing that you want to add? You know, I just encourage people to, to email me or um, you know, and log in and find out more about that RFP and if this is right for them. Great, and Tracy, how about yourself? Yeah, no, I want to shout out to to you, Dave and Joe, who's behind the scenes you can't see for facilitating these Facebook lives. Um, it's been such an important way for us to connect with a broader community as we aren't able to to meet in person. Clearly, we are learning things uh, about doing work in this new world in this new way. And usually we are together in our offices downtown and and um, now we are together. Uh, via Zoom or via Facebook uh, in, in these multiple avenues. So I, I really thank you all. I thank our entire board and our team for, for being so collaborative and encourage anyone with any questions or comments or input or feedback to, to please reach out to us. Um, that's how we learn and get better. And so we, we look forward to having many, many conversations with people um, throughout these coming years. Definitely. And uh, as I mentioned, we look forward to doing these again in the future if if needed um, and as needed. Uh, I'm sure we will be back on here at some point. We've learned so much from doing it. <laughs> it we, we started off, uh, you know, we were all new to this and we somehow have become almost professionals at putting these lives together. It's kind of a shame that we're ending them at this point that we've gotten so good at it. But, you know, uh, we got a lot of important work to do out there in the community. So we thank you everyone for joining and thank Michael and Tracy again for being here today and we'll see you next time.